I think that in the active movie analysis one tends to overlook the fact that all we see and hear is in service of something which is beyond image and sound. I think one first has to have some sense that all we see and hear is not an ends but a means. A means to arouse a very specific feeling inside the audience. It's the feeling which is beyond image and sound. So while analyzing Eyes Wide Shot, one first has to go back to why Kubrick wanted to make Eyes Wide Shot in the first place. And I think that this quote is most appropriate. Kubrick made films because he fell in love with the stories. Kubrick made Eyes Wide Shut because he fell in love with the story Traumnovelle by Arthur Schnitzler. When we fall in love with something, we feel it in our heart. Therefore, we can say that Kubrick made movies from his heart. In a documentary Stanley Kubrick and Life in Pictures, Steven Spielberg talks about the place from where Kubrick developed his project AI. This was something I knew he had been developing from his heart for so long. And this counts for any of his projects. So while analyzing Eyes Wide Shut, we have to be aware that Kubrick developed movies from his heart. It's because Kubrick fell in love with the stories that he made movies at all. Falling in love with something has to do with pure feeling. So analyzing Eyes Wide Shut purely as an object, though very interesting, is useless. Kubrick was after a feeling, but because this feeling is highly subtle, one very easily and literally overlooks the most important thing. One has to be aware that Eyes Wide Shut isn't only a movie, an object in front of us which we can see. We have to be aware that Eyes Wide Shut also and eventually is a feeling that is inside of us. Hence the title Eyes Wide Shut. We see Eyes Wide Shut as a movie of course, yet the movie, the image and sound, are a means or a channel to arouse a very specific feeling inside the audience. And this feeling has everything to do with the heart, the place where Eyes Wide Shut comes from. Stanley Kubrick Alive in Pictures is highly choreographed. Every dissolve, every background, every word, every gesture has a specific Kubrickian purpose. The Eyes Wide Shut chapter is about the film's central subject, the heart. Is it a coincidence that director Alex Cox uses the words hard time and ambiguity in the same sentence? And I think that one thing that people do have a hard time with in the cinema is ambiguity. The heart is inherent to ambiguity because the heart feels things. And feelings are vague and irrational. And why does Alex Cox make this gesture right in front of his heart? And why does a red triangle point to his heart? The title Eyes Wide Shut is about the heart, the symbol of the heart. It's eyes wide shut, eyes wide shut. We see Eyes Wide Shut as a movie being separate from us, yet we feel it inside of us. We see Eyes Wide Shut with our eyes, yet we understand it with our heart. Hence, Eyes Wide Shut, or feeling with your eyes, or seeing with your heart. Everything that is related to Eyes Wide Shut eventually has to do with a very specific feeling, which is felt by the heart alone. So everything related to Eyes Wide Shut emphasizes the heart. In Stanley Kubrick Alive in Pictures, director Sidney Pollack talks about Eyes Wide Shut. The heart of it was illustrating a truth. Composer Jerzy Ligeti, whose piano notes were used in Eyes Wide Shut, talks about Eyes Wide Shut. It was a knife in Stalin's heart. Then we cut straight to a scene of Eyes Wide Shut where we see Alice lying on a bed. The bed again refers to the symbol of the heart. The two pillows and Alice's elbow suggest the symbol of the heart. Again it's eyes wide shut. Two separate pillows which come together in Alice's elbow. You could say two separate eyes which come together in the heart. So far, part 3. 
part 4 will be about what I think is the very specific feeling that Kubrick was after in all his movies, but most intimately and most obviously in Eyes Wide Shut.